Welcome to another video by Ferros Technology. Today we're going to learn about linked tables, linking specifically to external data. Here we have several tables, and if I float my mouse over, you can actually see what it's linked to. Here, for example, it's linked to a text file. It says contact fixed pound text. So that's the table the that's the data that it is currently linked to. If you float your mouse over the Excel file, you have customers, uh, that's the customers tab in collectible minicars.xls. The same is true for down here. Here we have a table linked to an HTML file. Okay. And so it tells you which HTML file it's linked to. Uh, this table here is just linked straight straight to an access database. So various ways to link. The only thing I don't show you here is a link to an external data source that is ODBC. I don't happen to have one of those to give you an example of at this point. You can also link to SQL Server, to Oracle, to Teradata, other databases. Uh, that you might have need to. In fact, in my work environment at Boeing, I link to external data such as that all the time. So let's look at what, what the limitations might be. The limitations of linked data are a little bit all over the board. Pretty much, as long as you're linking to a database table, you don't have much of a limitation. For example, Excel and text files and HTML files, they're going to be read-only. You can see them, but you can't really touch them and change the native file in Excel or in the text file or on the web page. Same is true with any Outlook contacts that you might link into your database so that you can read contacts that are kept in an Outlook uh, environment. Now, ODBC files are going to be based on the source that it comes from. In other words, if it's a production database, they might not give you full read and write capabilities to those particular tables, you might have only read-only access. Or if it's uh, at the database front end to the back end is being SQL Server and your administrator gives you read-only, it'll act just like a native table. The same is true for Microsoft Access. Microsoft Access, most of the time, will be full access, depending on the environment it's coming from and the database administrator of that particular database you're linking to. So there are some limitations, but in the case of Access, it's a common practice to have all your forms and reports in, the, in a front end and have all your tables in another table, and then you'd automatically link to those tables and then they would definitely be read and write, separating the, the front end from the back end data. Sometimes you put it in a multi-user setting where the back end is in a multi-user area so that you can distribute multiple front ends to people and they access the same back end. Uh, fairly common practice for a small business to be able to do that. So let's go ahead and look now at what it takes to link uh, a table. Um, and you go over up here to external data and a new data source. And when you click the down arrow here, here's all your data sources that I showed you that you can link to Excel, HTML, XML, text files. You can link to all those sources in from file. Uh, from a database, you've got Access, SQL Server, or DBase, Azure, so forth and so on. Down here and other, there's where you get to your ODBC links. Um, and we'll cover much more, much more in the ODBC area in a, in a later video. But right now, what I want to do is link to a table in an Access database. I'll open it up. And when you'll open it up here, the important part is to look down here to the link data source rather than import the data from the table. So we, when we want to link to the data source here, we'll click OK. It'll bring up my list of tables. I can choose which table to link to, and I want to link to sales payments. So there we go, sales payments. When I click OK, you notice sales payments just appears here with this arrow in the front of it indicating that it's an external source for the sales payments data. 
The next thing I want to show you is if I want to link now to an Excel file, I'll go to From File, Excel, and I want to link to the data source by creating a link table here. When I click OK, Table Products then is the, uh, the source here. And here it gives me kind of a list, a, a preview, so to speak, of some of the data in that table so I can look at it. When I click Next here, it's already decided that the probable first row status is that they are column headings and it automatically selected it. If it didn't select it here and you notice that it was uh, regular column headings, you could then choose first row it contains column headings here. When you click next here, it gives you a potential name here. If you put TBL in front of it, that which is the usual naming convention for tables, sometimes you won't have that in an Excel spreadsheet, you'd put table in front of TBL in front of it. So when I click finish, it says finish linking to the Excel spreadsheet and you have table products listed up here with the Excel icon showing. So now when I want to refresh each one of these links, when I'm looking at here at external data, I, I have linked table manager up here and here's where I can link to all of uh, the various sources. Now, what it gives you is, is the access tables linked to this particular uh, database source. And when I click the plus, you can see which items are linked to this particular ACCDB file. In Excel, I've got two different spreadsheets here. So you see it linked twice to a collectible mini cars and products, for example. And in fact, there's a third one here that links to sales line items. So you'll see them separately. Don't let that alarm you too much because each separate spreadsheet will have its own entry here. Uh, you come over here to select all and you can refresh the links or if you need to choose a different destination, such as the fact that you've moved the files and need to relink them at a new location, you, you would slide down here and click relink to change the location of those particular data files. And then you just go one th one by one through each one of those uh, data sets and find the file and relink each one that in a similar way to the way you originally linked to the files when you first um, linked them up into your database. So I hope this has helped. If it has, please hit the like button and uh, hope to see you again in the channel later. Thanks.